Hi, I'm Kevin, the developer of Starcom Unknown Space. This video is a little bit of an experiment. Every week during Early Access, I've been posting developer updates in Steam and on the game's blog about what I've been working on. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of a deeper write-up on some topic that I think players might find interesting. And often there are things I want to talk about that are kind of hard to explain with just text that would be uh, easier to illustrate with some imagery and video. Uh, obviously it takes more time to record and edit together video, but I thought I'd give it a try this week and see how it went. Also, just as a quick heads up, I'm going to be showing content from throughout the game, so there may be some mild spoilers. So, the topic of this video is the process of creating Planet Anomaly images. As some of you might be aware, Starcom started as a fairly basic Flash game back in 2009, and in that game, planets didn't really do anything. They were just kind of decorative background images. Since the game is an action-adventure RPG about space exploration, when I started work on Starcom Nexus, I decided I wanted them to act like a kind of treasure chest. You've discovered a new star system and blown up some baddies or dealt with some threat, etc. Now there are planets you can search for rewards. First you scan them, and if there's something there, you can send your command crew down to check it out in a kind of mini-away mission. When your lander reached the surface, you'd enter a mini encounter dialogue where your crew might find resources, items, discoveries, or maybe kick off a new quest, etc. Each anomaly needed a unique image to help the player visualize the encounter. The idea is that these anomalies are a reward, something to encourage the player to visit just one more star system. One of the big challenges I faced early on was that I wanted to have a lot of planets with unique anomalies. This both meant a lot of writing, but also creating a lot of the images. Currently there are over 200 unique anomalies, each of which has at least one image illustrating it. To create these images, I mostly use a 3D rendering tool called View, which is sort of like Blender or 3ds Max, except that it's narrowly focused just on designing and rendering outdoor environments. My earliest attempts at using the software created some pretty bad images, like this one here. So initially in-game, the images were shown at a low resolution, and I created a shader that added some noise and scan line effects to hide the defects. As I got better at creating the images, I was able to show them at a higher resolution, but I kept the shader effect because I think it makes them feel more alive, although it can be turned down in options. Okay, let's uh, open up view and get started. The first thing I do here is add some terrain. Um, I can add a procedural terrain or create a, an editable height field map. Uh, in this case, I imported an existing terrain model that already had a texture, so it was all set up to kind of look like desert landscape with uh, hills and mesas. Um, then I place it, scale it, sometimes I will clone it and move it into the background sort of create the distant, the impression of more distant uh, terrain features. Next I added some water which is just uh, an infinite plane with a uh, special material applied so I could edit the uh, shader properties of that, which uh, gives it foam, waves, changes how light decays as it passes through its surface and so forth. Next, uh, in this case, and this is a step that takes a lot of time, is that if it's supposed to be a habitable terrestrial biome, I'll add plants. Basically, in view, this involves defining a particle ecosystem for a particular material and then painting plants in. There's an option for procedural placement that sometimes works, but because it tries to populate the entire terrain, 
uh, it can run out of memory and, and crash the app. So usually I opt to do uh, a manual painting. For this scene, I created two ecosystems. Um, this allows me to kind of place them uh, much more naturally and organically. Uh, one is a low dry bush and the other is a larger tree, so I can have the, the bushes at the lowlands and then the trees a little bit further from the water. Now I design the atmosphere. There are a lot of settings in view and it's taken a lot of trial and error to find ones that work well. A combination of haze, fog, uh, volumetric lighting, cloud settings and so forth. Uh, one hack that I found is that the lighting and atmosphere can go a long way to hide some issues. So if a scene isn't looking great because of maybe some uh, texture issues or model qualities or so forth, I can usually get it to look good enough by lowering the sun's angle and moving it away from the camera so things are more edge or backlit, giving it uh, that golden hour glow and conveniently hiding uh, some, some potential issues. A technique that I rely on heavily for adding sci-fi elements dates back to the pre-CGI film era. Visual effect artists, uh, like for Star Wars, would grab store-bought models, like literal physical models, paint them, and then put them in the scene and pretend they were spaceships or lasers or whatever. Uh, this is called kit bashing, and I do the exact same thing, except I'm buying 3D models from an asset store. So I can take a spaceship model, scale it up, turn it on its nose, give it a sun-bleached white texture, and now it's a futuristic turbine. Once I've got an image that I'm pretty happy with, I'll do a full quality render of it, which can take anywhere from a few minutes to an hour. One thing I should explain is that this is a recreation of the process of generating an anomaly image. For Steam's trading cards, I needed to do some new renders of a few images, so I took the opportunity to simulate the, the recreation of one of the anomalies. The actual process involves a lot more trying different things, undoing, rendering, changing settings, re-rendering, finding things don't look good, starting over sometimes, uh, and in general, a lot more experimentation than was shown here. Normally once the image is rendered, I'm basically done, but in the case of this image, the anomaly doesn't appear on a planet. Instead, it appears on a ring world mega structure. To make it look like a ring world, I grabbed uh, an in-engine screenshot of the artifact. This already had a material I designed that looked like a terrestrial biome from space with clouds and water. And then in Photoshop, I took the final render, cropped it out, and dropped it in. Then I could use a gradient to fade it in from the bottom and change the blend mode to look like you were viewing it through the atmosphere. Then some minor tweaks, and we're done. Thanks for watching.